Rocket firing dragons, machine gun wielding squirrels, penguin warheads, and Pikachu's deranged cousin that not even Nintendo wants to talk about. I 100%ed Pal World. So let's catch every pal in the game, destroy five ferociously difficult bosses, and build an extraordinarily cool base. Subscribe for more Gamer Gar content. It is time to start our epic Pal World adventure. Our character wakes up on a beach surrounded by strange creatures. At this moment in time, we have no idea what these creatures are and what they are capable of. We do however notice a strange looking tablet right in front of our character with some very interesting text. The towers are the key, the tree holds the truth. And the tree this tablet is referring to is an absolutely massive tree that can be seen from most areas of the map. It is time to open up a couple of chests, grab some supplies, we're going to get this fast travel point, these will come in extremely handy later on, pick up some berries, we're going to get our very first level right there, and now we're going to have a quick look around this area to see if there's any good base building spots. The sooner we can set up our base, the sooner we can get organized and we can start tackling these towers one by one. It is time to start capturing some pals. All we have right now is our fists and we use them with great effect. We throw our very first pal sphere at 95% catch rate. This pal is in the bag. The very first captured pal of the game is a lamb ball. And these pals are actually quite useful for producing wool in ranches and also they make for great shields. Next up is a fabulous looking chicken. I didn't want to catch it, but our lamb, extremely violent indeed, decides to kill it. We do pick up a lift monk effigy right there. That's needed to increase our capture rate. It'll come in super handy later. We're finally going to catch our first chicken of the game. And these chickens are very, very handy for producing eggs. And we will need eggs for tons of recipes in this game. This is just one special ability that Lamb Ball has, and it is a shield. Every single pal in this game comes with their own unique abilities. There's over 100 pals to capture in this game, so it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of a team we develop. So we're going to summon our trusty lamb, and we are going to build a workbench. Using the workbench, we will be able to make a huge array of useful items that would increase our survivability. The first thing we're going to go for is a wooden club. This will make capturing pals much easier. I received a second level. We're going to learn some pal spheres. We're also going to learn the pal box, campfires, and a few other bits and pieces. What we have right here is going to be our very first cat, Tiva. These do have mining skills, so it's very handy to get these early on as they will get you lots of stone. They're also quite useful when it comes to handiwork. We're going to get some stone ourselves because we need stone to make some future developments. We're going to put down our lovely pal box, let the base building begin. Once we put down the pal box, it will give us a huge radius around this structure that will allow us to put down as many structures as we like. The pal box also counts as a fast travel point. This makes it super easy to just teleport back to the base anytime you want as pal world is absolutely covered with fast travel stations. So we got a few more level ups. We're going to get a few more essential items such as the ranch and our very first plantation. This plantation can only produce berries but we do get much better ones as the game progresses. We will need berries of course to feed our pals. If our pals go hungry they will get depressed, they will get sick and if that happens they won't work for us properly. So it's very important that we take care of our pals so that they can do some decent work for us. I also made a house here out of wood and I'm going to put down a couple of essentials in the house. The first thing we're going to put down, of course, is the campfire, followed by a storage box. There are hundreds of different items to loot in this game, so we will be needing tons of different storage boxes. Fortunately, any storage box that goes into our base, we will have direct access to. This means upgrading stuff in the base and making new buildings will be super simple, as all the storage boxes are linked. It is time to make a repair station. As you can see, we have caught another new pal. This cool pal is called Pengalit. And this pal's special ability is basically a missile launcher. <laughs> and you're going to see a lot more of that later on in the video. We're going to make some pal beds. This means our pals can sleep in peace. This is very important for our pal's sanity. The more we upgrade the pal box, the more pals we can assign to our base. With the current settings we have selected, we can assign up to 15 pals to each base. And that is the recommended settings that you should use when playing this game. You can, of course, increase or decrease that. But for this 100% challenge, we're going to go with the regular rules. We now have four pals in total working on the base. Each pal has their own special abilities, which is great. It's time to make some serious progression. 
there's a cool pal here called a Fox Sparks. This thing is a living, breathing flamethrower. If we can capture this, it's going to make short work of certain bosses. We're also going to capture a Gumas. This pal will be able to plant for us, so we won't need to seed any more fertilizer into the berry plantation. The Gumas will do it for us, no problem. We're going to loot some more chests, and we're going to capture more pals we have here as a cremis. We're also going to pick up any eggs that we find along our travels, because a lot of these eggs can give us really cool pal. And using egg combinations, using different breeding techniques, we can get access to some of the endgame pals very early in the game. What we see here is a fabulous scene of myself and Gumas working together, and Pangolin decides to join in to water up the crops. So we now have a pal for planting, we have a pal for watering, and we also have pals for collecting. So we don't need to worry about food anymore in our fabulous starter base. We're also going to make some cloth armor here as well, just to improve our defense capabilities. And we're going to put down a lumber yard as well. This means we will now have infinite access to wood. We're also going to make a statue of power. And this statue is vital when it comes to increasing our own capture rate. And increasing the stats of pals that will make it to our battle team. We're also going to make a pal workbench. That will be used to make saddles and pal accessories shortly down the road. We're going to upgrade the base. Yet again we can now assign more pals to our base. And the more of those quests that we can complete the more upgrades we can perform. It's time to say goodbye to the wooden club and hello to the bat. The bat is much more potent and it will do a lot more damage, especially to low level pals. This is going to make it super easy to capture tons of pals early on. And in this game, in order to level up the fastest, it's all about capturing pals. It doesn't matter what kind of level the pal is at, we will get XP that scales with our level. So it's worth capturing tons and tons of pals to get those level ups. If we want to 100% this game, we will need to attain max level to get our hands on the best gear this game has to offer. So we're going to learn a few more essential items here, including the crusher. This magnificent structure will convert stone into pallidium, and we need thousands, hundreds of thousands of pallidium to make capture spheres. It's time to upgrade the base yet again. We can now assign more pals to the base. There are hundreds of caves throughout pal world. This is the first of many. Inside the cave, we notice a new pal here. This is called a Fuddler. These pals are actually pretty good at mining. After a good few attempts, we managed to catch a Mao. These also reside inside the caves. I also found a chest in this cave as well. Inside was some bread and a copper key. Some of the chests in Pal World will require keys to open. They will require copper, silver and gold keys. The boss of the cave, an elite Tombat. The elite pals of this game have more HP than that of the regular, and sometimes they have much greater stats as well. So it's always in our best interest to catch as much of these elite pals as possible. Unfortunately, we managed to kill the first boss, but we can always go back into this dungeon and farm it over and over again, no problem. The bosses, however, do change. In the first two chests, we got rubies and high-grade technical manuals. We can use these manuals to get more technical points, and the more technical points we can get, the more schematics we can unlock in our own technology tree. What's great about Pal World is that pals actually sleep at night time, most of the pals anyway. That means a bonus capture rate for us. We managed to get our very first Nox. Most of these pals we won't actually use, but if we do want to 100% this game, we need to capture all of the pals. So I'm after getting the good bit of stone today, it is now time to make a three shot bow, and this is going to be a significant improvement from the bat. I'm also going to make a hat here as well. This will give me more defense and HP capabilities. And the more defense we have, the more attacks our character can take before we kick the bucket. We continue to level up and capture even more pals. The pangolet is very impressive when it comes to using frozen abilities. We also managed to get a Nightwing. We can actually use this pal to fly around the map. But first, we need to get a few levels and also we need to build its saddle. We're also going to catch these dare pals. I believe the name is an Urky dare, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. These dares are absolutely magnificent ground mounts. They also make for really good lumbering companions as well. So we managed to get two Urky dares there, which is really nice early on. What we have here now is our tent capture on a Cativa. Because we've captured 10 out of 10, the game will no longer award us with bonus XP if we decide to capture more Cativas. So in order to maximize XP, we should be aiming to capture 10 of each pal, not any more than that. Unless, of course, we're going for specific breeds, or if we want a super-powered version of that pal. 
What we see here now is a pal with a buff called Lucky. And pals can have up to four buffs in this game each. All these buffs of course are randomised, but if we use proper breeding techniques, we can breed up pals that are on with very specific perks to maximise their damage. So that was another Gumas added to the bag. Because it was night time, the Tombats were out. We will of course capture those. Tombats have a level 2 minus skill, meaning they can mine metal for us. And we are going to need millions of metal in order to 100% this game. What we have here is another cool pal called a Tiefent. These pals have really cool healing abilities. We also managed to capture a Hoopcrates, which is an owl type pal. We also found a really cool camp here. In this camp we had syndicate thugs and they had imprisoned a pal. The great thing about this is we don't actually have to capture the pal imprisoned. We just have to clear out the base, unlock the container and the pal will become ours automatically, which is super handy. We just have to push down the F key here and the pal is ours. That is another Nox added to the bag. Because of the buffs that this Gumos has, it's going to be more suited towards work. It has a defense debuff, but it also has a work speed and attack buff. Because it has a 15% additional work speed there from the lucky buff, we're going to resign it to work duty. We also gained a few more levels. We're going to earn the saddle here for this Arky there that we caught. We're now going to have a really nice ground mount so we can get around the map way faster. We're also going to unlock the crossbow, which is a really nice ranged weapon. Early on, it will do the job and it will do a decent bit of damage to most of the early game pals. We're going to make a hot springs here. Pals can get into this to increase their sanity. Now we're going to put down another berry plantation because we need more food now that we have more pals working hard in our base. Because we have met the requirements, we can now upgrade the pal box yet again. This means we can assign even more pals to our base. Eventually, we will get to a stage where we can make a second base anywhere else on the map. In order to smelt metal bars in this game, we need a pal with the kindling ability. Thankfully, Fox Marks will do the job for now. They are much more effective pals we can get later on in the game. We're going to convert some stone into pallium fragments. We're also going to make Fox Sparks Harness. This will give us the ability to turn Fox Sparks into a flamethrower. And that's going to be super effective against grass type pals. So we're now going to make a much better workbench. This will give us access to the mid tier accessories we can make in this game. For starters, the pelt armor. That will give us more HP and defense. We're going to make our first medicine workbench. Medicine is needed in order for our pals to thrive. Pals do get sick, pals get ulcers, pals get depressed. Medicine is an absolute requirement to have a fully functioning base. We're going to upgrade the pal box yet again. It's now on level 9. We're making really good progress. I'm also going to put down a ranch here. And we can put tons of different types of pals into this ranch. Depending on the pal you put into this ranch, they will generate items for you every couple of minutes, which is super handy. It's now time to make the Orchidaire Saddle, and we can now get around a whole lot faster. The Orchidaire also has a ram ability, which makes it even faster. It also has a double jump, so navigating the terrain will be easier than ever. Pal World has an absolutely huge map, so getting a ground mount early on is definitely a necessity, especially if you want to explore all of the cracks and crevices that Pal World has to offer. This map is absolutely loaded with secrets, so getting an early Orchidaire mount is definitely the way to go. We are back to mass capturing pals. Chicopee is a weak pal, but it doesn't matter to us. It gives plenty of XP. Penglet is a pal we will use later on. It has a devastating warhead ability. Wait till you see it in action. We're also going to catch some pals at night time here. We caught the Melpaca. This is actually quite a good ground mount, but it's also a decent combat mount as well. Melpacas normally travel around in pairs. This makes trying to capture them difficult for early players. We just gotta stick to our ranged combat, keep our distance, and the Melpaca will be yours no problem at all. We're now going to capture our very first Lift Monk, and this thing is an absolute beast in combat. It has a submachine gun special ability, and it can dish out extreme damage. I also caught a Tansy, and it's very similar to the Lift Monk in where it has a assault rifle, but for this challenge, we primarily rely on our fabulous lift monk. We will build a lift monk later on in the video. Wait until you see how much damage it can actually do. We're going to pick up a few more eggs and we come across our first dinosaur. And this thing is really good at gathering wood. It's also quite good in combat as well, but we want it for the wood gathering. It's also really good at planting and it can help out a ton around the base. These dinosaurs normally go around in pairs. This can make trying to claim them very difficult. We managed to kill the first one, unfortunately because you ran out of pal spheres. 
back of the ranch, our lamb balls are doing great work. They're dropping wool left, right and centre. Wool is needed for an absolute ton of structures in this game. Amassing one early is a good strategy. We're also going to learn another palisphere. It's a mega palisphere, much better than that of the first. We also find a really cool village here. This is known as a small settlement and there's a couple of merchants in this village. One sells really cool items and the other sells pals. But the best thing about these merchants is that you can also sell your own items to them and these merchants will buy almost anything off you. So if you feel you have a huge amount of items that you just don't need, you can simply just fast travel to the settlement and sell anything you want to these merchants. Let's take a look at the pal merchant to see what kind of wares he has. We can also sell pals to this merchant as well. So if we ever feel that we have too many pals that we just, just don't need, we can sell a huge amount of these pals to make loads of money. The merchant has some pals we haven't come across yet, but we just don't have the funds to afford them. The cows are an absolute necessity when it comes to making cake later on, but we can always come back later and check it out. It's now time to tame more pals. This time, we're going to go for a magnificent Sparkit. Sparkit is basically a support pal. Not only does it have the ability to charge electrical appliances in your base, but it also powers up other electrical types making for really cool electrical combos. The next power we're going to capture here is a Fuwok, and this, just like the Pengalit, is a water slash ice type pal that has very good water capabilities. We're not going to stop there though, it's time to get even more Celeres, and these pals can actually be used as a glider, so if you jump off huge heights, you can actually bring that pal out to prevent yourself from dying. It's also a great way to get around very quickly. What we see here now is a very overpowered pal, this is known as a Vixie. If we put this pal inside our ranch, it will generate pal spheres for us. That's right, they will dig up an infinite amount of pal spheres from the ground. What? what we see here now is me using my very first glider, and this is just the first glider theory. We can learn much better ones down the road. We're now exploring yeah. other parts of the map. We're coming across tons of different types of pals. It's very exciting indeed. What I've come across here now is our very first rush roar and these pals can actually be used to mine the metals you can even mount them and you can rush at the ores hence their name <laughs> rush roars and mine loads of metal that way as well we also got a caprity and those pals have a really cool special ability where they can throw berries off their back and you can pick them up for additional food syndicate cans are littered all over pal world inside this one there was a captured lift monk the pals do change every time, so you can go back to the same camps over and over again to see if they're going to swap out pals for different pals. So it is a really good way to get loads of pals if you just keep revisiting the same syndicate camps. They don't actually go away, and they reshuffle through a huge different amount of pals. What we see here now is another pal called a Jolt Hog, and this comes in a couple of different versions, including an ice version. This pal is basically a grenade. If you power it up with skill, it can be quite potent. You can throw it at enemies or bosses and it will do substantial damage, depending on its attack power. We're now going to capture some Dire Howls. These pals are absolutely amazing when it comes to travel companions. They're quite fast to mount and they also make for really good combatant pals as well. When it comes to dungeon crawling in this game, I cannot recommend this pal enough. It is amazing at dungeon crawling. Next up, we are going to attempt to catch a Lee's Punk and these have a really cool ability called Sixth Sense, where they will showcase on your map from when you activate their ability if there's any caves nearby. So if you want to go dungeon crawling, just put one of these in your party and activate its Sixth Sense ability. We're also going to get a Wally Pop, and if we put these into ranches, they can generate cotton candy and it's really good for restoring your pal's sanity. Let's go back to the base now and look at all this lovely wool we get to pick up. We can also put a lot more pals on the base, so we're going to take up the lamb balls, we're going to put in two vixies, they're going to generate pal spheres. Our base will also get raided, so it's very important that we keep up with our defences. In pal world, in my opinion, the best defence is a good offence. As you can see, the fox sparks harness there, the flamethrower, was super effective against these pals. We're now going to make a mega shield, because the better our shield, the more survivability we have, and there's going to be pals we get to fight later on in this game, they will do crazy damage to us if we don't have a good shield, if we don't have good armour. Look at all the pal spheres our Vixies have dug up. Capturing pals is now going to be easier than ever. Of course, these pal spheres are only good for low level pals, but there's still plenty of low level pals that we haven't captured yet in the game. So it's time to go back out into the wild and capture tons more pals. We're going to start with some tansies here, and there's still four more we can capture for bonus XP. 
We're also going to get on our rush war and we're going to start mining some ores because we now need tons of metal in order to advance our base if we want to make more of the mid-tier structures. So it's time to smelt some ingots. That's going to get us a good 25 right there. Fox Max will get on that. We're now going to fight our first boss. This one is known as Chillet. It's an ice type. We get it down to low health and we attempt to capture it. So as you probably figured out by now, the lower the pal's health, the higher chance you have in capturing it. But here's a tip. The more status effects you can inflict upon a pal, the more of a chance you'll have to capture it also. So we just got level 20 there, which is great. And we're also going to go to another syndicate camp here. And what we got here is a Jodhog Christ. This is basically a crystal version of the Jodhog. You could say it's an ice version. It's also a hand grenade, of course. It just does ice damage. It's now time to take on the first tower boss. This is going to be a Grisbold fight. Thankfully, this Grisbold will not have the minigun. But take my word, people, you will see plenty of Grisbold minigun action later on in this video when we fight the harder bosses. Zoe and Grisbold, this is the first of five tower bosses. This fight is actually very simple. You could view this as a tutorial fight when it comes to the tower bosses. They do get substantially harder, especially the last three fights. The last fight is probably, in my opinion, the hardest fight in the game, including the legendary pal fights. So later on, we are going to have to build some pretty decent teams. Grisbold goes down no problem at all. We had a decent team assembled. We had a Fox Sparks and we had a Nightwing, and they were leveled up quite a bit. We also get some ancient technology points when we beat these tower bosses. We can use those ancient technology points to get some pretty good schematics inside our technology tree. I'm just going to give you a look at the map so far. This is what I have uncovered. And there's still a lot of uncovering to do. So we're going to learn the egg incubator. We have a good few eggs picked up by now. It's time to start incubating those eggs to see what kind of pals we can hatch. There's also a small feed bag. And that's super handy because it automatically feeds yourself and your pals and it frees up inventory slots as well when it comes to food. There's also a pal essence condenser. We need this later on when it comes to maximizing damage and survivability for the pals that we have. There's also the grappling gun that you can get later. That's also going to come in super handy. So we're going to build a sphere workbench here. Now we can make gigaspheres and these... Just like the previous fairs are one tear up, it just means pals will be easier to capture. Raw's going to make a cooler box. This will preserve food much better for us, but we need a pal with an ability to make that cooler box work. So you basically need pals for the base to properly function. There's only so much a character can do on its own. So to get to the next level, we have to make a few more items. But first, we are going to incubate some eggs. We're going to put in the large common egg here. And normally, if an egg is large or huge, chances are... You're going to get something really good from it. Now it does say that the egg is a little cold. So it's only giving us a 50% increase in speed there. If we can heat up the room a little bit more. We will get much larger incubation speeds. Night time has come to Pal World. It is time to capture more pals. The daydream only comes out at night. What's really cool about the daydream is that if you have five in your party. They will all come out at the same time. So it is a quite a viable tactic for exploring Pal World. You could go around with five souped up daydreams and just annihilate the world. We don't utilize that tactic in this video, but it's something we might do in a future video. Grintail came out of our very first egg, which is pretty cool. Grintail is quite the rare pal to come across, so it was nice to get it earlier rather than later. There is a Grintail boss we can fight later on as well, but it's an alpha boss. What we just got there was a regular Grintail. So we're going to put down another pal box and this is going to be our metal mining base. We've got a couple of tombats out right now which can mine the metal. The cat vitas unfortunately can't because they only have a mining skill of one. You need a mining skill of at least two if you want pals to mine metal. We're also going to do another dungeon. I'm on my dire hole here at the moment. I took out my fabulous flamethrower friend here Foxbarks and I managed to whittle down this Killamari no problem at all. We just caught it there as well, so it was a good dungeon run. I picked up an ability here called Try Lightning. I can teach that to any pal I want. And that's a very strong attack. I also done another dungeon. I guess it was inside Vixies. The more Vixies I can get, the better. That means more pal spares for me. I also managed to get the boss Vixie of the dungeon as well. So I was very happy with that. Upon looting the chests, I managed to get more high-grade technical manuals. And I also got a defense pendant. This was the very first accessory I came across, and our character has two accessory slots. 
this just slightly raises my defense. But you know what? I'm not going to say no. The more defense I can get, the better. I'm going to capture a pal here now called Oppresso. And this pal has a very interesting ability. It can get itself high in caffeine. And it can work faster for you. <laughs> I managed to kill the boss one by accident because I didn't realize how much damage the tire hull would do. Not to worry though. We can always get more Depressos later on. I got more high grade technical manuals and some rubies that I could sell later. Back to the base, look at all of these fabulous pal spheres that our Vixies have dug up. I also put a Wally Pop in here as well because it drops ca candy and the pals really like that food. We're also going to smelt more metal ingots. 54 in total, we're going to get Foxbacks on that straight away. It's now time to make the Mega Shield. That is going to dramatically increase our survivability. We're also going to hatch open the dab bag here as well. And this has given us a Surfant. What's great about the Surfant is that it is a water pal. That means we can use it to travel the oceans of Pal World. And let me tell you something, folks. There is a lot of water in Pal World. There is a huge amount to explore. So we managed to make a saddle for this as well. And I was very curious as to what that island in the distance was. Upon coming over to the island, it says that I was doing some criminal activity which was a bit weird. It just means we're not meant to come over here. But that didn't stop me from exploring. I managed to get an Azerobe. This thing is an absolute beast when it comes to transversing water, but also when it comes to watering crops. It's got a watering skill of three. There's also rare flowers over here as well. And we need these beautiful flowers if we want to make mine wipes that are on to reset our character stats. What we see here is a very rare spawn, even for this area. And this is a wild Grisbolt. And this is something we absolutely want for our battle team. This Grisbolt has the ability to take out a minigun and destroy enemies with it. I can tell you right now the minigun ability can be extremely strong if you breed a really good Grisbolt and if you power up its minigun skill. Now it did take quite a lot of spheres. I just had regular spheres. There was a 5 or a 6% chance every time. But I had spares to burn so I just kept throwing them until I caught the Grisbolt and eventually... Luck came true and I managed to nab it. What we see here is another fantastic pal known as a Battalia. And this pal was born to work in a base. This pal has numerous good abilities such as planting and also harvesting. More pals also spawn in this area such as wild penkings. And these are really good for combat. They're also really good for working on the farm. Because they have the ability to water crops. Once the penking was caught it was time to skedaddle out of here. If we attack those NPCs, higher ones will spawn in and they have machine guns so they would eventually one-shot us. And the last thing we want is to die and lose all our gear. So we got an Arsox from an egg there. And the great thing about Arsox is that it gives you a buff to coldness. So if we go to the cold realms of Palworld, Arsox will protect us from the cold. The Age Robe we got didn't have great stats. It had pacifists, so we weren't going to use it for attacking things. It did, however, have a level 3 in watering, so we're going to swap that out with a pengolet straight away. Batalia here had tons of skills. She had planting, gathering, handiwork, medicine making, transporting. Probably one of the best piles you can put in your base. Then we had the Grisbolt, of course. And the Grisbolt had some cool skills too, but what I wanted the Grisbolt for was its minigun. So this was going to go straight into our combat team. Our base got raided again, but this time humanized invaded the base. The crazy thing about Pal World is that you can also capture humans, and you can even get the humans to do your bidding. You can get them to work at your base. If someone can please let me know in the comments if it's possible to breed those humans. If it is, I will absolutely make a video and see if we can breed the ultimate Pal Alliance NPC. Now, they don't really come with a whole lot of skills at all. He did have Burly Body, which was an increase to his defense. And he also had uh, one skill in handiwork. That's all he could really do, unfortunately. As punishment, I did get him to make some arrows, though. And there was quite the amount of arrows to make. So he'll think twice about raiding my base again. He was now part of the Gamer Gar tribe. <laughs> it was now time to go out back into the wilderness and tame more pals to level up. We got our very first Mazarina there, which is basically a cow. And if we put that into the ranch, it will generate milk. That means we can make more recipes. And there's quite a number of cool and potent recipes we can make in Pal World. I managed to capture more Dinosums. The more I, these I can capture, the better. I can get a total of 10, of course, for some sweet bonus XP. That was the second one added to the list. Unfortunately, it had the Coward trait, so we weren't going to touch off that when it comes to combat. I came across very interesting pals here. 
The first one is known as a Swee, and that big one is known as a Sweeper. Now here's the thing, for every Swee you have in your team, a Sweeper gets increased stats. So there is an absolute killer combo that's out there at the moment, where you can have four Swees in a team and one Sweeper. If you power up all of the Swee's skills, in terms of maximizing them, and if you also maximize the Sweeper skills, that's a whole lot of condensing, you could have the ultimate pal that could almost one-shot anything in this game. It is a crazy combo, it does take a lot of time to set up, but if you want to trivialize this game, just breed yourself some really good Swees and Sweepers, and just watch as they dominate the map. It was now back to get more pals, I got a Rye Bunny there, and I also found this little structure here, it was literally out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know if the developers just didn't bother finishing it, but it honestly looked unfinished. And if you look at the map here, I was just swimming around to see if there was anything hidden. And to my surprise, when I came across this, I got very excited. But as we can see, it could be something they'll put into a future DLC. Maybe it'll be a water village, and maybe it'll have really cool NPCs. Who knows? But it was really cool to find. There was a boat here as well. I eventually came across a giant volcano-like area. And at this moment in time, I didn't know much about this game. I didn't realize that the pals over here would be extremely high level. That, of course, did not stop my curiosity. At the end of the day, this game begs to be explored. Who am I to deny it such? It was time to grab all of the eggs I saw. These large, scorching eggs were going to give me some of the best pals in the game. You can also get huge dragon eggs over here as well, and huge scorching eggs. I also unlocked the fast travel. That meant if I died, I wouldn't have long to go to reclaim my gear. Back at the base, I decided to make my very first wheat plantation. And we're going to need wheat if we want to make cake. I now had berries, wheat and milk. All I needed now was something that produced honey. And I could start making cake. That means I can start breeding up pals to make the strongest pals in the game. So it was now time to level up yet again. We're now on level 11. What I made here now was a workbench for building weapons. Pal World has many weapons you can build, from assault rifles, to shotguns, to crossbows, to grappling guns, to rocket launchers. Pal World has it all, my friends. I leveled up the base yet again, I could now assign more pals to the base, which is great. I could also learn the fluffy pal bait, and the great thing about this is that it will restore even more sanity to your pals when they sleep in it every day. I incubated an electric egg here, I got a pal known as a Daisy, and Daisy accompanies you and follows up your attacks with lightning bolts, that increase in damage per partner skill level while it is in your party and not set as your active pal. That is quite the potent combination indeed, especially if you had a few of those. Next up, we are going to make our very first pal essence condenser. With this, we can basically sacrifice pals to make other pals way stronger. So if we want to increase skills of specific pals, we're going to need tons and tons of copies of that same pal. We're also going to make some fluffy beds, upgrade the pal box, we now almost have the pal box maxed out, which is great. If we take a look at our technology tree here, we're now on level 25. We can now make some pretty interesting things. If we get to level 26, we can make the power generator. Once that gets placed in the base, electrical pals will become much more important. We're going to craft some fabulous metal armor, and we're going to go back out into the pal world wilderness. And we're going to grab more pals. The pal we come across here that we're going to rescue is a floppy. And this pal is quite interesting, is that when it's in a team... It will appear near us and automatically pick up nearby items. Next up, we are going to tame a Cognito. We did have a very low chance, but the gods of RNG were with us today, and we nabbed the second one no problem at all. Just down the road there, I noticed a Relaxaurus. This was the very first time I seen one, so I got very excited when I saw this huge dragon-type pal. Thankfully, these things are quite common. Most, if not all, of the Relaxauruses we capture come with a horrendous skill called Glutton, it just means they require more food, but you can breed that out of them. Relaxauruses do come with a partner skill, where you can attach a missile launcher onto one of them, making them extremely potent indeed. I also came across another pal here. Now, this pal was actually summoned by one of those syndicate dogs. This pal is known as a Loop Moon. I managed to get it down to very low HP, and I managed to catch it using a regular pal sphere. At this stage in the game, it looked like that the regular pal spheres just weren't cutting it. Sometimes it took about 20 to 30 pal spheres to catch some of the pals that I was encountering. I managed to come across a Gale Claw as well. Unfortunately, my Fox Box killed it before I had the opportunity to catch it. Not to worry though, plenty of Gale Claws out in the wild. 
I picked up the lightning streak move today and another accessory, the life pendant. This will increase my overall stamina. I did have a really cool short equipped there and I also had a ring equipped it. So I decided to replace both with defense and HP. The more survivability, the better. I finally got a Ragnarok. This is an absolutely amazing pal. With this I can fly around. It also has fire abilities and it's much faster than that of the Nightwing. Unfortunately, I would need to grow a good few more levels in order to put a saddle on this beautiful bird. I could however use it as a work pal. It did have a level 3 kindling and a level 3 transporting, meaning it would be very good at smelting bars and moving the bars into a nearby chest. The next boss we're going to fight here now is known as Quivern, and this time we don't have to go to a dungeon to fight this. This portal here will bring us directly to a boss fight, and we can farm this boss every couple of in-game hours, no problem at all. Quivern is a dragon type of boss, and we can actually put a saddle on this later on and fly it around the map, which is pretty cool. It also enhances dragon type attacks while mounted. There's actually quite a lot of pals in this game that will enhance various elements of attacks while you are mounted on them. And that tactic will come in super handy for very specific battles down the road. Now there was only a 5% chance to catch this guy. I did use however my very last mega spare with a 15% chance but it didn't work. I had 19 regular spares left. Eventually I managed to catch it. And it was very lucky to do that because the chances were just so low. When you do the first boss kill, you do get ancient technology points, and they're very useful when it comes to getting the great things like grappling gun recipes, feed bags, things like that. I came across another base here, Ragnarok cleared it out no problem at all. Inside, we're going to get another really cool pal. This one is known as Flambel, and the great thing about Flambel is that if you put it into a ranch, it will generate flame organs for you. Flame organs is a component that is needed for a huge array of different structures and items to be crafted in this game. We're going to go back here now to the Statue of Power. I have been gathering a lot of Lift Monk effigies, managed to get my capture skill up to 4 there, which is really nice. That would improve the odds of me capturing pals. There's another pal here called the Dig Toys. We're now in a small desert area. They are much bigger deserts in the world, but this one has Dig Toys. These are probably one of the best mining pals in the game. So I would like to get a good few of these to put up into my metal base. That way I can get way more metal at a much faster pace. That was my very first dig toys, so I was very excited about that. I also came across a really cool ice biome. I just wanted to take a moment to show you how brilliant this map actually looks when you get up to a really good height and you get to look around. And you just get to see the depth of this map. So there was a big mountain here and there's actually a tower boss up there as well, but we're not going to fight the tower boss just now. We're going to need a pretty decent team to fight tower bosses. I'm also going to make a cake here because the more cakes I have the more breeding I can do. And we're going to get a pal here known as a firing to heat that cake up for us no problem at all. It was now time to make our first of many breeding pens and we could put two pals in here. And together they will either breed the exact same pals that you put in or they could breed something totally different. There is hundreds if not thousands of different breeding combinations in this game. If you utilize the breeding pen properly, you can get access to extremely good pals very early on. I also made a sphere assembly line here as well. This gives me access to another tear up sphere, and it also means that we can just make spheres at a much faster rate. We just need pals with the handiwork skill to come along and get it working. But we also need electricity to get it working as well. I got my very first van rim there as well, and you can fly around with that. It's actually quite a fast flyer. And we also managed to get another Doomud. And they actually have mining skills. They're really good for mining metals and rocks. I was back out now to catch more mazarinas because I wanted more milk so I could make more cakes. I didn't have any bees yet, but I could kill cinemats for honey if I really needed it to make cake. There's a pal here now called Bushy. I needed to capture him because I wanted to make a pal called Anubis. And if we breed a Bushy with a Pen King, we can make Anubis. Not only is he a very good worker pal, He's also a really good combat pal, but we'll get to him in a second. So this is the boss battle for Bush. He's actually a really good combat pal himself, but we're not going to use him for combat on this playthrough. We're just going to use him for breeding. So we're going to breed a Relaxaurus here and a Grisbolt. The result will be one of the most powerful electrical types in the game, known as an Arsark, and we will use that for our combat team going forward. Next up, we're going to go back up to the mining base, and I'm going to build a big stone structure around the base because the pals keep falling off the base. The game is early access, they haven't perfected the AI just yet, 
but they are things we can do to make the experience better. So we're going to get our huge dragon egg here, that will be incubated and as a result our sec will be ours, that will take a while to incubate, so we'll come back to it in a moment. For now, we're going to go back out to the wild and capture more pals. We've just caught a Kelpsy, and Kelpsy has a great ability, while it's in your party the attack of your active water pal is increased. We're now going to put down an electrical generator here. We need this to power up our assembly lines, and we also need it to power up some future structures we make as well. And in order for us to use that, we just need a pal with the electricity skill to power it up. Thankfully, we have loads of pals, for example, Jolthog, Grisbold, that can power that up no problem at all. So it's time to put some more work into the metal base, and our spare assembly line is now in full whack. We've got penguins, monkeys, flower people, all working hard together to build ourselves some really good capture spheres. It's now time to upgrade the base, it's now level 14. We can design even more pals to the base. 14 pals can be designed right now. We are also level 29. Once we get 31, we can make the high quality hot spring. That's a game changer. It can restore sanity at a much faster rate than that of the regular hot springs. We found a new boss here known as King Paka. This guy is pretty useful. The more King Packas in your party, the more maximum weight capacity you have. So a great tactic, especially to get resources early on, would be to fill up your party with King Packers, equip yourself with a really good pickaxe and just roam around and start getting coal and sulfur and metal and everything else that you need to make some of the more advanced gear that are on in the game. We came across another pal here known as a Bristla. Bristla will increase attack power of grass pals. We also managed to get ourselves a Gelclaw and they can be used as gliders which is really cool. We also came across another pal here known as a Robin Quill. And what's very interesting about this pal is that it will increase damage you do to weak points of monsters. So this pal could actually be quite good when it comes to dealing with certain bosses in the game. There's actually a lot of pals in this game that augment damage, so the amount of different combinations you can utilize in this game are almost limitless. It was night time again, it was time to tame even more pals. What we managed to grab here was a Hell Zephyr. This is actually a very quick pal, so if you want to get from A to B, this is the pal you jump on. It was time to hatch open more eggs. What we got here now was a Lunaris. This is an absolutely amazing worker pal. It's got some really good skills, including a high level handiwork of tree, so it can make things for you very quickly. But we weren't finished there. We were going to finally break open our huge dragon egg and get our very first Arzurk. Now, he's not a perfect Arzurk. We can do way better. But for the start to mid tier game that we're now on at the moment, he will do just fine indeed. I always got a sweeper from the other egg as well, that was fine. But if we take a look at his abilities, he got Hooligan and Ferocious. That was a pretty good damage increase for Arzak. Like I was very happy with those. He's, he's probably one of, if not the best lightning type pal in the game when it comes to dishing out some serious damage. I finally made a saddle for my Nightwing. I now had the ability to fly around the map. Unfortunately, when it comes to flying in Pal World, the stamina gauge you have is very limited. So you have to be really careful with certain flyers on where you want to go. Because I was able to fly around the map, I was able to see a lot more things that I couldn't from the ground. I came across an NPC here known as the Reincarnated Guy. And what he's saying here is I'm not even supposed to be here. I nearly died after getting hit by a truck while on the job. When I came to, I was on this island. When I was sure I was dead, I prayed for a slice of pizza. Now, I can make pizza appear in my hand whenever I want. Pretty amazing skill, yeah? Here, take a slice. And he gave me a pizza. He was a level 50 NPC. Very interesting indeed. And I think he just cracked the whole mystery to this Pal World scenario. I think our character here is just a reincarnation. And once the developers finally figure out what they're going to chew with that massive tree of life, I think we're going to get some really cool endgame content as to how our character came here, why our character came here, and what is in store for the future of this game and for character development. So I came across a new boss here known as a Relaxaurus Lux, more or less the same as a Relaxaurus except it has an electrical ability as well. I absolutely had to catch this. The cool thing about this pal is that you can also make a missile launcher for this one, very similar to the missile launcher you can make with the Relaxaurus. That was the first boss kill, more ancient technology points for us. It is time to fight yet another boss. This one was Lunaris. Now we just hatched this one from an egg, but it's always nice to get some spares because Lunaris has some really nice skills that we can make full use of back on our bases. So it was time to capture Lunaris. Now this time we were using Gigasphere's, but the chance was quite low, 18%. Fortunately, 
RNG was on our side and we managed to nab that one no problem at all. Next up it was time to capture a branch sherry here and this pal is actually really good at planting and I do use that pal quite a lot in a number of future bases. I decided to fly up to the volcano area and have a good look around. As we can see there's a level 49 Blazimuth in this area. I couldn't see him where I was but I learned later on that he's actually hiding inside a cave. And Blazimuth is actually a really strong pal, probably one of the strongest fire pals in the game. But we'll get to see more of him later on. It was time to go back to the base, break open some eggs, smell some bars and do some general base progression. As we can see we had tons of pals now mining ores. We had our Quivern, our Tombats, we even had Dictys. Back to the regular base, I made another assembly line here. And now that the assembly line is made, we can make the Giga Shield. That is even more shield for our character, meaning our survivability has just went up twofold. Because we had Lunaris and some other really good pads with handling skills, it didn't take long at all to make such items. I also made my first high quality hot springs. That's going to go a long way in terms of restoring our pals to sanity. It was then time to break open some more eggs. This time I managed to get a Yarmantide Ignis. Just like Blazimut, this is a ferociously strong fire elemental pal. I also had a huge rocky egg. I was going to break that open and I got my first Anubis. Anubis was actually bred from my Grisbolt and my Relaxaurus. So it actually didn't get good stats at all. I mean, it has really good skills. It's got level 3 mining. It's got, hand it's got level 4 handiwork. And it's even got transporting. Unfortunately, its passive skills weren't great. But we do end up breeding elite workforce Anubises later on in the video. Making our base very overpowered indeed. <laughs> if we take a look at the Yarmantite Ignis, we can actually craft a saddle. And we can ride this around. We can even swim in the water with it. It has a level 4 in kindling. There is no better pal in this game at smelting bars. Yarmantide Ignis is the pal to use if you want to smell bars or make cake. What's more, if we fully condense him out, we can increase that kindling skill to level 5. It's time to hatch open even more eggs. This time I got a Reptiro, and this has level 3 in kindling and level 3 in mining. It is probably the perfect pal to use up in the metal base, because not only can it mine, but it can smelt. We're going to go back to the desert area here. We're going to capture some more pals to get some more level ups. This time, we got a pal here called a Hangu, and I also wanted to get more of those Doom Mods as well, because I can capture a total of 10 for the bonus XP. I managed to get 100% on him because he had a fire debuff, plus his health was low, so it's very important going forward, especially with the harder pals, that we get status effects on them to increase our capture rate. I also wanted to catch some of these Toko Tokos. They had a nasty ability known as a self-destruct. If that ability hits, it could do crazy damage, so we really had to be careful. What I noticed about this game is that most, if not all of the pals, drop specific items. These Toko Tokos, for example, drop gunpowder. So if you are in the lines of making tons of ammo, killing tons of those Toko Tokos would help greatly. So I received another level up, level 33. It was time to tame some of these Lovanders. These Lovanders actually drop cake. Now it is quite a rare drop, but if you increase the magnitude of which these pals spawn, you could effectively farm these for hundreds and hundreds of cake, no problem at all. It's also worth noting too, that certain pals in this game have abilities to make certain elemental pals drop even more items. So if you increase those abilities, you could potentially make a cake farming pal, no problems at all. It was time to tame even more Dictoises. These are absolutely amazing at mining. I had one up in the base at the moment, I really wanted to get more. Upon achieving yet another level, I could now make an electrical furnace. This furnace will allow me to make refined metal ingots. They're needed to make tons of endgame structures and endgame accessories, such as really nice rocket-mounted saddles. I also had to mine some coal here if I wanted to make some refined metal ingots. I do eventually make a coal base, but that's shortly down the road. I also made a weapon assembly line here as well. I could now make advanced weaponry with this, which was nice. I now had all of the assembly lines made. That means I can now finally upgrade my base to level 15. This means I can now make a total of 3 bases and I can have a total of 15 pals working at each base. That's 45 pals in total that can gather resources and do various work activities all around the big pal world map. So there was a level 38 Memorist here, an Alpha Memorist, just down from our first base. 
and it's been wandering around now for ages and I always wanted to beat it but because it was such a high level I stayed away but my pals were now a lot stronger so I had a crack at it killed it no problem at all it actually drops a ton of XP it's a great way to level up in this game eventually I know I will run out of pals to tame because you can only tame 10 of each pal for the bonus XP when that runs out it will come down to fighting bosses to grind XP that way it was time to make some refined metal ingots and I had some really nice pals to get the job done for that. So I could now make hyper spheres. And these were actually pretty good in terms of capturing pals. They're not the best spheres you could make. But they're the best spheres we could craft right now. And I could craft a lot of them. So I'm going to make tons of those. And then we're going to go on an absolute taming spree. Level 35 unlocks an even greater sphere. It also unlocks circuit boards. We need those to make tons of advanced structures. The ultra sphere is quite nice. Unfortunately it requires refined ingots and for refined ingots we need coal so it's just more grindy to get those spheres so i will use them if these spheres just stop doing what they're supposed to do which is capture paddles got my first univolt there that's basically a thunder horse and you can put a saddle on that and you can mount it around the place i was also on the lookout for eggs and effigies i saw a huge dragon egg in the distance alongside an effigy it was just too good to pass up had to grab that huge dragon egg straight away. God only knows what monstrosity I'm going to get out of this. I can tell you right now, it's not going to be anything small. Because I had really good spheres, I didn't really have to do any more battling to capture the low to mid-tier pals. I could just throw spheres at them. If I throw spheres at the back of the pals, I would get a bonus capture rate as well. I also discovered a little mine in here as well. That would actually bring me into a boss battle. That's the shoal mine shaft. And those little secret mine shafts are actually all over Palworld. They're hidden all over the place. Inside was a Bonsherry Aqua. More or less the same as the Bonsherry we got previously, but this was a water version, which was really cool. I pulled out my Arsark to fight it, and Arsark, as we can see, does crazy damage because lightning is super effective against water. I did attempt to catch it, but I didn't realise Arsark would hit it so hard with a skill that it would wipe out the rest of its health. But we can always come back later to capture it no problem at all. It did drop 9 precious dragon stones. You'll notice there on the left hand side of the screen. Those dragon stones sell for huge amounts of money. Which is really nice. I also got a new accessory from the chest. An attack pendant. This increases my attack damage. Which is actually really nice. That means the crossbow for example will do more damage. If I hit something with a bat or a melee weapon. That will also do more damage as well. So it's time to fly around here now and capture even more pals at 91% on these Wally Pops. It's just a no-brainer to just use these spheres and capture them. 100% on that one. We were going to shoot up levels like there's no tomorrow. Level 36 already. The max level in this game is level 50. So we're actually not too far off now of getting max level. There's some Rye Bunnies here as well. It's 100% chance. I also went to fight a Catrice here inside of a boss instance. That was also a 100% chance. I found a level 17 Alpha Grintel here. This was a boss we had not beat before, so beating this will give us technology points. I also wanted to capture it, because I only had one or two Grintails caught so far. It was a no-brainer to add this one to the pal deck. That was the second Grintail caught. I heard the lovely noise of a pal with the lucky buff. It was a Cativa. It had to be mine. The lucky skill is really good. 15% attack, 15% work speed. It's a no-brainer to get as many pals as possible with this trait. Using the breeding system, we can pass this trait around to other pals, making them equally as strong. I came across a Massandra Lux. This thing is an absolute beast. We can create a saddle for this pal, which basically gives it a grenade launcher. This thing is a thunder-throwing, grenade-launching panda warrior. We don't actually use this pal in this video, but I do intend to make videos in the future showcasing how powerful these pals can be. I also came across another pal here called a Rayhound. This pal can be ridden, it's quite fast and he can also double jump. It's a pretty cool pal to use and it's not bad for dungeons either. Especially if those dungeons have water type pals inside them. You'll be at a significant advantage. We can now finally make the saddle for a Ragnarok. Ragnarok has been part of our combat team for quite some time. So I'm very excited to put a saddle on this and fly it around. So we're going to say bye to our Nightwing. Hello to Ragnarok. It's much faster and it's got much better abilities to use as well, including very devastating fire abilities. So at the moment I'm breeding Lift Monks. I want to create 
the ultimate lift monk. It is quite the murder machine. Indeed, this one has muscle head and it also has runner. Muscle head gives it an attack of 35%. It's just too good to pass up if you're breeding pals that you want to use in combat. I also bred an Astagon here as well. Arzurk and Grisbolt, that's the combination you need in order to get an Astagon. Astagon is a dark dragon type so he can learn tons of very powerful moves. He came with Ferocious and Serious so we could use him for work or we could use him for combat. He also has a level 4 mining making him extremely valuable as a worker pal as well. Especially when it comes to mining metals. I managed to get an Orchidaire Terra here, more or less the same as the regular Orchidaire except it was a Terra variant. And these are new pals, so we can capture 10 of these and get bonus XP on top of that which was great. So this is another Wildlife Sanctuary, now this has Penkings, but it also has other useful pals as well we haven't caught yet. One pal in particular known as an Elfidran, you can actually catch him here as well. And he's a dragon type pal, he's quite big, and he is what I'd call an end game dragon. And we will be needing some endgame dragons that are on in the video to fight. Very difficult bosses indeed. Some of the hardest fights in the game. Elephitran here has a really cool passive where if you kill dark type pals, they drop more items. Here is an 11 Alpha Gumas. This is actually a boss. And I just managed to just catch up here and grab a quick stealth catch. It was just so, so nice to just one shot it there with a sphere. I managed to make 273 pallium fragments using all of the stone that my pals have mined up so far. That's going to be a lot more spheres for me. I'm also back in the small desert, catching more dig toys here, getting more bonus XP. And I also raided a base, and I managed to free here a Mao Christ, which is a new pal. I also came across a Sparket with the lucky trait, so it was an absolute no-brainer to catch that. The more lucky traits we can get now, the better. Especially when it comes to breeding later on. That was all the spark it's got as well. 10 out of 10. I was also catching more of these univolts. Because I just wanted to level up as quickly as possible. Some of the items you make endgame are just amazing. I finally hit level 40. I could finally learn the Grisbold minigun. I also learned the mounted machine gun. It's really good for defending your base. And I also picked up the giga glider as well. It was time to fight Felbad. Felbad only has one good skill and that is medicine making. It's actually quite nice to get a pal sometimes with just one skill. That way it'll only do one specific thing in your base. Sometimes I find that if pals have numerous skills, they can do things you don't want them to do. I also fought a Nightwing boss here as well, level 18 Alpha. That was easy enough to catch too. That was another Nightwing in the bag. And that was the 6th Nightwing caught there. More bonus XP for me. The last 10 levels to get to 50 were going to be a serious grind. It's time to make some refined ingots here. A lot of refined ingots are needed to make a lot of the endgame saddles for the pals. I also made some regular ores too because regular metal is also needed for a lot of stuff in the game. I came across another boss here, Patalia. We already have Patalia, but I do want to beat every boss in the game. It's not required for all the achievements, but you can't really say you 100% of the game if you haven't beaten every boss in the game now, can you? Achievements or not. As we can see, the Dick Tices were doing miracle work here with stone. Over 7,000 stone collected. I'm also going to make a new melee item here called Lily's Spear. 450 damage. It was a no-brainer to swap it out with the crossbow. It's going to come in super handy later. I finally made the ultimate Lift Monk. It had Runner, Hooligan, Ferocious and Musclehead. The only non-attack stat it had was Runner. But Runner still wasn't too bad because it could move faster. We were now going to level up this lift monk to 50. We were going to condense other lift monks into it. And we were just going to power it up. So it can reach its maximum potential. Using the statue of power. I had lots of pal swords collected. I'm going to start with its attack power. I couldn't maximize its attack power at the moment. Because I needed more of the larger pal swords. But we do get those later on. And 24% is nothing to snuff at. I then went to the condenser. And I started condensing tons of pals into our lift monk. Upgrading its main skill, which is going to be basically a sub-machine gun. As we can see, the first time you do it, you just need four, but it multiplies every time. So you need hundreds of lift monks in order to maximize its primary skill. I then decided to make a large pal bed, and this is the ultimate in comfort when it comes to your pals getting a good sleep at night. It was then on to grab some Moss Andres. Now, we did come across the Moss Andres Lux earlier. These are just regular Moss Andres. But we hadn't really caught any of these yet, so I just wanted to get 10 of these to get some more bonus XP. I also came across a boss, Elfridren. 
We did catch one initially over in the wildlife sanctuary, but I wanted to get 10 in total, so we were going to farm that location until we maxed out the elephant drains. It was a great way to get XP also. It was then back to the base. We had a large scorching egg. I got a Kitsun out of it. This is an absolutely amazing pal. Its special ability basically means that no sort of weather will affect you. So if you go to the snow biome, you'll never get cold. If you go to the volcano biome, you will never get hot. Kitsune is probably one of the best grounds you can have when it comes to exploration. My base got raided yet again. I just wanted to show you how powerful Lily's Fair was. I finally had enough mats to make Grisbold's minigun. This thing is an absolute beast of a weapon. And the best thing about it is that it doesn't consume any ammo. It does have a hefty cooldown time, but when it comes to fighting the tougher bosses of the game, it's always nice to take it out and do some really good burst damage. I managed to get a fox kill in the snow biome. There's actually lots of pals in the snow biome we have not caught yet. It was now time to fight the second tower boss. Lily and Lyleen. Now Lyleen is a grass type pal, so fire type pals will be super effective on her. But to be honest, this is only the second tower boss. It's a quite simple fight. They don't get hard until the third fight and up. They get extraordinarily hard after this fight. And the fifth tower boss is insanely hard. You have to go in there with a well thought out team, well thought out skills, a well thought out strategy. But Lily and Lyleen is more or less a pushover. Coming in with high level pals should see you success, no problem at all. I did have a Ragnarok of course, with some devastating fire abilities. I also had a Kitsune and an Astagon, both with some pretty good fire abilities as well. So it wasn't too difficult to get Lyleen down. I had more than six minutes to go. Not that much challenging at all. That was two tower bosses dead, three to go. I got some agent technology points for the kill, and then it was time to go back out to the snow biome and grab even more ice type pals. What I was getting here is a pal known as a Rangrix. Shortly after, I found a much, much larger desert area. Within, I found a little town. Super excited with this. There's actually three merchants inside this town. One sells pals, one sells ammunition, and the other sells regular items. The great thing about the vendor that sells ammunition is that the ammunition never runs out. So there's, in my opinion, no point using resources to make ammo if you can just buy it off the vendor because it's easy enough to get gold in this game. This is just a showcase of Grisbo's Gatling gun. It is extremely powerful. As we can see, it just wiped out a Mamorous there, no problem at all. And you're going to see a lot more minigun action as we delve deeper into the endgame fights of this video. I went back over to the Volcano region. We were taming some new pals. What we see here is a pal called a Blaze Howl, and that's actually really good for smelting bars. We are now kind of going into the mid end game of this challenge. What you see here now is another wildlife preservation. This is the third wonders tree in total. There's lots of new pals on here to capture. What we see here now is a pal known as a Warsect. This is probably the strongest ground type pal in the game. We don't use it in this challenge, but it is quite the potent power pal indeed. Also, we have a Wombo Botan. This pal is absolutely amazing at cutting down trees. You can also put a saddle on it and ride it around as well. He also has the ability to increase your carrying capacity, making him a really good pal when it comes to exploration and item gathering. Next up, we are going to catch some Wixens here. These are fire type pals, and they actually have a host of really handy skills, including a high handiwork and a kindling skill. I finally created a shadow beak it's a really good flying mount one of the fastest fires in the game unfortunately i need level 47 before i can craft a saddle for this epic dark bird all i needed to breed shadow beak was a kitsune and an astagon which i already had so it was no hassle at all to incubate that shadow beak next up we are taking on another boss this is known as Velet level 38 it was simple enough to fight because our ragnarok is a fire type pal I'm also going to capture some bees here now because I badly need pals that can generate honey at the ranch so we can start our fabulous cake production business. Now this is an Elza bee and we're going to use that to get honey. Next up I managed to get a blaze howl knocked from a fire egg. That was very lucky indeed. I also made a grappling gun here and this is really handy to get around if there's too much weight on your character and you can't move. Now since I've done this video developers have put in a patch where your character can move if you're overweight. But at the time of this recording, that patch was not implemented, meaning the grappling gun was a lot more useful. Next up, we are taming some Mamorists. 
We're basically grabbing everything we haven't got so far up to a maximum of 10 to see if we can finally sort out the rest of our levels. I wanted to get 50 as quickly as possible. I was level 42 at the moment. Back to the volcano area. Grisbo's Gatling Cannon is great when it comes to whooping our enemies. I'm fighting here a Black Marketeer NPC. He was a very high level and did take quite a number of spheres to catch him. We won't actually use him, I just thought it was very intriguing that we could actually capture human NPCs. So that was another human NPC added to our fabulous base. I managed to pick up a Fire and Noct here, Noct meaning Nocturnal, so it's just another variant of Fire and it's just a Dark type instead of a Fire type. I also managed to get a Fenglope, which is actually a very good ground mount, it's very quick and it's got a nice handy jump as well. I located a village here called Fisherman's Point. Inside there's a few handy dandy vendors and close to this village we have a ton of bushes that spawn around the map. If we want to get really good Anubises, we need to capture tons of bushes until we have bushes with really good traits. It was now time to open up another egg. I got a pen king, but the reason why I'm shown is because this pen king came with Artisan and Sirius. That means I could breed this pen king with a bushy to try to make some really good worker Anubises. Here is another Thunder Flying type, it's called Beacon. It's actually a very good flyer, and it is super effective against Water Pals. Here is a Blaza Mutt, so I think this is either the first or second one I've encountered. It has quite a lot of HP, it does a lot of fire damage. It's probably one of the best Fire Pals in the game. The fight did drag on for quite some time, but it was worth it, because I didn't really want to catch this and have it in my team. Blaza Mutt has a host of deadly abilities, so it's always good to capture a few of these. So that was the first time we captured Blazimut, one step closer to completing the whole PAL deck. But we're not there just yet. We do have the legendary PALs to also capture, and some of the legendary PALs are ferocious difficult to fight. And we're going to get to that in just a couple of minutes. I also got a Serpent Terra hair, which is just a variant of the regular Serpent. Here in the huge desert area, we have another mob. This is called a Suzuku. And it is a fire type mod. You can also put a saddle on it and fly around the place. It is quite the flyer. It's very fast. We are now entering the late game where we need to breed an absolute ton of pals in order to get the pals that we want. So what we're doing now is we're mating bushies with penkins and we're trying to get Anubises that are coming with artisan, serious, workaholic stats so they will be the ultimate base workers. These Anubises have handling skills of four. They also have a transport skill and a mining skill. They are probably one of the best pals you can have working in a base. Anubis is also a very good combat pal as well, but for the first type of Anubises we're going to breed, they're going to be work Anubises. As we can see, I got a few here with some decent stats. I'm then taming more bristlers. I'm basically trying to capture anything that I haven't got before or anything I haven't maxed out so I can increase my level further. Level 44 at the moment. If I see lift monk effigies, I will prioritize those because the higher I can get my capture skill, the easier it will be to capture some of the end game pals. As we can see, there are still tons of pals I haven't maximized, including the Robin Quill. I also located a dungeon here with a boss Fenglope inside. Because it was an alpha Fenglope, I said, why not? Here is our lift monk in action. As we can see, its sub machine gun skill is nothing to laugh at. It packs quite the punch. That was the first boss skill there for Fenglope. More ancient technology points for us, and we get some sweet loot as well. As we can see, we have got six glorious huge eggs here to harvest. We now have two Anubises just breeding together. That's going to get even more Anubises for us. We're going to make the electric furnace now, and with this we can be able to make pal metal ingots. And that's the last tier of ingots we get to make in the game. This is our first Anubis with Artisan and Sirius. We're also going to fight Warsec, an extremely powerful ground type pal. And that was the first boss kill, more tech points for us right there. And that was another boss dead. We're now going to take on the Yorman type boss, level 45 water dragon. This thing packs a serious punch, but we had our lovely Gatling cannon. We also had the lift up machine gun. We were able to whittle down its head in no time at all. As we can see, the Gatling cannon doesn't do a whole lot of damage in terms of single shots. But because it fires so many bullets, that actually makes up for the damage it does. Not to worry though, you will see much stronger Gatling Cannons later on in the game. So I finally decided to take on the 47 Anubis that was in the small desert. And it was an extremely challenging fight. It ends up killing all of my pals and I'm at the mercy of a 5% capture rate 
with only 20 hyperspheres left. Thankfully, I finally caught him. I also got a level up as well. That's level 45 and an Alpha Anubis added to the team. Because we were now level 45, I could make the Assault Rifle. This is a powerful assault weapon. However, when it comes to the end game, it is severely lacking in damage output. Fair enough, it's good for the weaker monsters, but it will not serve you well when you're fighting the legendaries, when you're fighting the last few tower bosses. So if I can give you any advice in this video, don't bother with weapons, just stick to your pals, stick to the powers they can unleash in battle. So we're just breaking up more eggs there, getting more pals. As we can see, I maxed out my Lift Monk's attack power and health. I'm also increasing its defense because it is very squishy at the moment and I do want to increase its survivability. Now, the first time we took on Yarmantide, we killed it by accident. This time, I really want to capture it because I really want a water dragon for my fabulous growing base. So we're going to open up here with Lift Monk, use his submachine gun. Then we're going to swap over to the Gatling Cannon. And finally, we took out Arzork that one shot at him, which was another mistake that I made. I should not have brought out Arzork with his HP so low. Surely, the next time I fight him will be the time that we will actually capture him. So that was two kills in a row there for Yarmantide. The only silver lining there is that we do get quite a lot of XP for killing Yarmantide. What we have here now is a Verdash. While fighting together, he would increase our movement speed and he would also apply grass damage to our attack power, which actually comes in really handy, especially if we're fighting pals weak to grass type damage. So from doing all the dungeons and fighting all the bosses and from opening all the chests, I have accumulated quite a lot of rubies and minerals. I'm going to sell that to the merchant, dramatically increasing my gold. Because I have so much gold, I figured there was no point making gunpowder and wasting metal to make bullets. I would just buy assault rifle ammo instead and save myself tons of time and resources. So I'm going to go with maybe 400 rounds here. And I decided to try out the assault rifle to see how powerful it actually is. But before that, we are going to finally capture our first Yarmantide. Yarmantide is an amazing water dragon. He also has a level 4 in watering, so he can water up plantations in the blink of an eye. He's probably one of the best picks you can use as well when fighting high-end fire-type pals out in the wild. Another pal here known as Cyblex. This pal is absolutely amazing. If you put this pal into a ranch, it will generate high-quality cloth for you. It will save you an absolute ton of time and resources when it comes to making some of those endgame items, including those large pal beds. Just stick two or three of into your ranch and away you go. We're now back at the giant desert and we're trying to get a Dinosaur Lux here. And this is the same as a Dinosaur except it has a Thunder Element attached to it, which is quite interesting indeed. So that is the second one of those captured. More bonus XP for us. We're now on level 46. I also came across a Robin Quill Terra. It's just another variant to Robin Quill, so it will have slightly different abilities, but the abilities don't change that much. That's even more XP for us. We're now mating Mossandras together, and the reason why we're mating Mossandras together is because we want to get a Mossandra with very good offensive capabilities. We will then mate that Mossandra with a Rayhound in order to make the ultimate Grizzbolt. So I finally hatched open a Mossandra here. Now it had Hooligan, it had Ferocious and it had Aggressive, but it did not have Musclehead. So I decided not to use this one to make a Grizzbolt. I will wait until I get a Mossandra that has Musclehead at least in order to make a Grizzbolt after that. So we're going to put this one back in the pal box and we will continue to breed until we get a Mossandra with the desired traits. I do have a Mossandra here with Musclehead and Hooligan. The other Mossandra has Ferocious and Aggressive. If we can get a Grizzbolt with those four stats, it will be extremely powerful. We can use it all the way to the end game, no problem at all. So I started with my Lift Monk here and we're going to fight this menace thing. Once we whittle it down to almost 0 HP, we're going to throw a Hypersphere and we are going to capture it. That is the first menace thing added to our fabulous pal deck. As I was exploring, I came across a really cool structure here. At the very top of the structure, I noticed four chests. How could I refuse? I flew straight down, opened up the four chests. And just to make a good point here, if you do see a chest, you should prioritize it because pal souls are super important for endgame to power up your pal stats. Finally, we got the Moss Angel we were hoping for. It had Hooligan, Ferocious, Musclehead and Aggressive. We could now mate that with a Rayhound to get the ultimate Grizzbolt. I also had to mine up some pure quartz here as well because I needed to make electronics. 
in order to make some of the end game structures and accessories so we could 100% this game. So that's what we did today. The circuit board requires pure quartz and polymer. Polymer is actually simple to make, you just need high quality pal juices to make that and there's plenty of pals in the game that drop that when they are defeated. It's now time to go back to the metal base, we are going to place our electric furnace right here. And once this is built, we can now make pal metal ingots. And we need pal metal ingots to make things like legendary spheres. We also need pal metal ingots to make the best armor in the game as well, to increase our own survivability. In order to make a pal metal ingot, we just need some regular ore and pallium fragments. It's actually probably one of the easiest ingots to make in the game, in my opinion, because pallium fragments are simple to get. You just have to put stone into a crusher and you can get thousands upon thousands of it no problem at all back to our main base we are doing some more breeding we got a grizzbolt here with ferocious musclehead and hooligan it didn't have aggressive instead it got cold blooded so i had a choice to make use this grizzbolt in our main attack force or keep breeding until we get a grizzbolt that replaced cold blooded with aggressive i decided to keep this one and to use it because aggressive only gave a 10 percent increase in attack power it had musclehead and ferocious so i was happy enough with that I decided to start condensing more Grizzbows into this one to make its minigun skill way stronger. So what you're going to see now is a much more stronger Grizzbow in action. We're now flying around the map and we're getting more Wixens, we're getting more fire type pals to add to the pal deck and also to increase our experience. So there's tons of Wixens and Lee's Punks around here to capture. And because this is a low enough level area, we're getting a 100% capture rate on most of these pals, which is great. Not only were these pals asleep, but I was also getting back attacks on them as well, further increasing my capture chances. There was also lift monk effigies and pal souls littered all over the area. I decided to move my original base to this location because it has way more space, because I wanted to make a really cool base before this video ends, before I get 100%. So this is going to be the place where we're going to make the best of our dreams. We're on level 18 at the moment. It's worth noting too that further increasing the level of our pal box will yield absolutely no benefits to us. The only reason I'm increasing the level is because I want to 100% the game, so I just want to get it up to level 20. As we can see now, I am level 50. I got there eventually. It took a serious grind. I can now make the pal armors. I can make the rocket launcher. I can make the best equipment in the game. As you can see in our technology tree, sometimes there's question marks here. That means we just haven't got the pal yet to unlock those saddles. And most of those question marks at the very end of the technology tree are legendary pals that we will be attempting very soon indeed. We finally got level 20 here on the pal box. That was very nice indeed. You can of course go into the options and you can increase the number of bases you make. You can increase the number of pals you have working in the base. But because I wanted a bit of a challenge, I decided to just keep the stats the way they are. So I'm going to make some cold resistance pal metal armor. And I'm also going to make fire resistance pal metal armor as well. And that's more or less one of the best armors in the game. Apart from the legendary armors that you can get from fighting some of the legendary pals this game has to offer. I'm also making a helmet here as well, which is the pal metal helmet. It's just more defense for me as well. Some of the pals in this game, especially the legendary pals, can dish out some serious damage. So we need all of the best items in order to tackle them and to capture them. So I unlocked a travel point here and just up from it is a skill tree. Skill trees now will become very important because we need to teach our pals high level skills in order to fight some of these legendary pals. We also need our pals to have high level skills in order to fight some of the tower bosses. There are three tower bosses left to fight in this game. I have held off the third tower fight now for a while. But I kind of want to hit them all in one fell sloop once I have my desired pal team assembled. It was now time to fight an alpha version of Astagon here. Inside a cave in a volcano, I killed him by accident of course because of our lift monk as a murder machine. But we can go back later on and capture him if we want. He does drop pal metal ingots. He also drops a ton of precious dragon stones. So it's actually a very nice fight to do if you need money and if you need some extra resources. I did get an emerald and an innovative technical manual. This will give me a good few technical points upon use, which is really nice. The more technical points I can get now, the better. Because I'm max level, I, my character won't get any more technical points normally because I can't level up. So I will have to go in and do dungeons. We finally made the saddle for our beloved Shadowbeak. Look how fast and look how cool 
this pal actually looks. It was now time to fight a legendary pal. I decided to start with Jet Ragon because I just think it looks so cool. Jet Ragon has some insane abilities. Comet Beam there, which are basically homing comets that lock onto your pals. They do immense damage. Every time I summoned the pal, it was met with extreme firepower. Jet Ragon not only has high HP, high defense, he is also very fast, very aggressive, and does crazy damage. I did have 61 legendary spheres. Each sphere gave me a 5% chance to capture this pal. As we can see, he had a ton of HP left. But because I'm not very good at combat, I decided as a latch ditch resort to just keep spamming spheres at Jet Ragon in hopes to catch him. Unfortunately, that tactic didn't work and he wiped me out. It was time to go back to the base and make my team stronger. So I was going to upgrade my Lift Monk's submachine gun ability yet again to 3 stars. In order to get the final star, I had to condense 64 Lift Monks into it. That's going to be a lot of catching. I also have huge dragon eggs here. Each one will give me a Yarmantite Ignis. I wanted to get a combat oriented Yarmantite Ignis I could bring into battle. I also had huge rocky eggs as well because I wanted a combat oriented Anubis. So it was time for some serious breeding to get the pals that I needed to crush those legendary pals to make my team stronger. We are now in the end game of Pal World. So all we have left now more or less are to capture the legendary pals and to beat the tower bosses. But in order for us to achieve those feats, an absolute ton of grinding will be needed. Now, I do cut out most of the grinding involved, otherwise this video would probably be 24 or 36 hours in length. So I'm just going to show the highlights here of assembled teams that I'm using in order to fight these encounters. So what we have here now is a Yarmantide Ignis. I'm just putting all my pansos into its attack power. I'm prioritizing attack power over defense because I feel like if I can dish out enough damage to these legendary pals, enough damage to these tower bosses, it's much better than stacking up on defense. If they're dead, then it's a win. As we can see here now, I've got a really nice Yarmantide Ignis with an attack of 1167. This thing is going to pack a punch. I'm now breeding Anubises and I'm looking to get combat Anubises. I'm also breeding more Yarmantite Ignises as well, just so I can condense more into my original one to make it stronger. I'm also going to roam around here as well, just to show you how strong he is. 27,000 damage to that rush run. Now obviously he won't do that kind of damage to endgame pals because they have much higher defense. They're much higher level. I finally got an Anubis here with muscle head, swift and aggressive. Not only was he very fast, he's also going to hit like a truck. Anubis is one of the best combat pals in the game, believe it or not. So we're going to take out Pengking here and we're going to put in Anubis. What we have now is a very nice balanced team that we can use to tackle some of the end game content. So we're going to get our Anubis here and because I had so many Anubises bred, we are going to condense them into this Anubis, powering up these stats even more. Shadow Beak has a devastating move called Divine Disaster. It summons at least 10 to 15 spheres. Each sphere will fire energy lances at pals, wiping the floor with them. It's super effective against most pals in the game. It is crazy strong move. And you're going to see this move used a lot when it comes to fighting bosses. What we're fighting here is the Alpha Blazamut. Capturing it was simple because I now had a very strong pal team. It is now time for another tower fight. This is the fourth tower fight, Marcus and Phalaris. If you're wondering, we actually haven't taken on the third fight yet. I accidentally went to this tower thinking it was the third fight, but it wasn't. It was the fourth. So this is the second hardest tower fight in the game, Marcus and Phalaris. Not to worry though, we have a very good assembled pal team. We actually managed to beat this fight no problem at all. Now, he does fly around on this pal, it can be quite hard to hit. Not to worry though, because we have a lot of pals, we have a lot of guns, and we're going to do some serious damage to this thing. So, we're going to open up this fight with our usual Grizzbolt, and take out the Gatling gun straight away, and as we can see, the damage numbers are much better. We're going to bring out Yarmantide, we can bring out the Lift Monk, activate that submachine gun, do some crazy damage right there, switch to Shadow Beak, give it a Divine Disaster, and as you can see, I'm just constantly cycling pals, using their skills, taking them in, bringing out the next pal, and that is the best way to fight in this game. To continuously cycle your pals, use their skills, while their skills are on cooldown, bring them back in so they can heal and that they can reset their skills, rinse and repeat, Marcus and Pharellus went down no problem at all. 
five ancient technology points and just two tower bosses to go. Because I wiped the floor with Marcus, we're going to move straight on to the next tower fight. This is actually the third tower fight, but it's still quite a challenge because the difference between the second and third tower fight is staggering. The HP that these bosses have is just crazy. This is Alex and Arsorc, an Alpha Arsorc. Now it is a Thunder type, not to worry though, because our paths are so strong, we're going to use the exact same tactics as we used to beat Marcus. We're just going to open up with Shadow Beak here, give it a design disaster. It does crazy damage. And we're going to swap it out after we use all its moves. We're going to have our Lift Monk here with a submachine gun. Grizzbolt with his Gatling Cannon. And before we know it, Alex is dead. Another boss eliminated. That just leaves one tower to do. But I can tell you right now, the last tower is insanely hard. It is a huge difference. So I'm now catching Suzuku's to get more XP from my pals, but I'm also catching Alpha Suzuku because some of the Alpha fights can drop legendary schematics and that Alpha Suzuku can drop a legendary shotgun blueprint and I really wanted that shotgun going into the tougher fights in the game. I also made the weapon assembly line 2 here so I can now make rocket ammo and I can make some rocket launchers. And they might come in handy later on too. To make the rocket launcher though I needed PAL metal ingots. Now, I ended up catching this Suzuku about 20 different times. I even ended up slaughtering it with a butcher knife. It just would not drop the schematics. Blazamut here has a chance to drop the legendary assault rifle schematics. So I started farming him as well. So it was back to taming. I really wanted the legendary. I decided to start with Frostalian this time. It seemed a lot more manageable than trying to go back in and get Jet Ragan. The reason why we're starting with Frostalian is because it is super effective against the Jet Ragon fight. So if I can capture one or two of these, we will have a serious advantage against fighting Jet Ragon. And the more Jet Ragons and Frostalians we can get in our team, the better team we're going to have. We're going to have a serious team kitted out with legendary pals. All of these legendary pals when captured comes with the legend skill. They also come with amazing stats. This Frostalian, for example, has an absolute ton of HP. A ton of defense. It's got very decent moves. That crystal ring is very powerful. The blizzard spike is very good at freezing enemies. It also has some amazing traits. You can put a saddle on this mount. You can fly around with it. Legend gives a 20% attack defense increase. It also gives a 15% movement speed. It's got Ice Emperor. Further damage increase to its offensive capabilities. As we can see, I'm butchering Blazamut here in the hopes to get the legendary Assault Rifle Blueprint it is an insanely low drop rate. I do end up getting it eventually, the Legendary Assault Rifle. Finally, it took about 20 Blazamuts, slaughtered half of them, 560 damage. I thought to myself at this moment in time, surely this is going to be the end on and be all of weapons. It turns out that these guns are just so weak. This is level 32 Lunaris. It's just so weak. And I know that attack power does help these weapons. I do eventually respect my character. I pump a ton of levels into my attack power. And these weapons still do really bad damage. So if I can give any advice. If you're still watching this video. Just don't bother with the weapons. Just breed up your pals. Make them insanely strong. And you'll have no problem at all. Beating the hardest contents in the game. I also wanted to make the ultimate pengulet. So I started taming hundreds of of lovely cute penguins in the hopes to make the ultimate missile launcher penguin. I also went to the ice area here and started killing some pals to get some rare flowers to respec. I also took on another Frostalian because I wanted at least two of my team to face off against Jet Ragon. That was the second Frostalian in the bag. I could now start breeding these to make more Frostalians. I could now create an army of Frostalians if I so wished. So I started upgrading the skills of my pals. Lift Monk now had Fireball, Pal Blast and Hydro Laser. All insanely strong skills from farming the skill trees that are littered all over Pal World. Grizzbolt, I can give him some pretty good skills too. So I'm going to give him Solar Blast. I'm also going to give him Ignis Rage as well. So he now had three different elemental type attacks. It was then finally time to fight Jet Ragon. Even with the two Frost Islands in my team, this thing was an absolutely insane challenge. Eventually, it did succumb to my legendary spheres, and I nabbed my first Jet Ragon. I was so happy at this stage. I came such a long way, you know, from capturing sheep to finally capturing the biggest, baddest dragon in the game, Jet Ragon. He's also the fastest fire in the game. You can get from A to B very quickly with him. 
Jet Ragan comes with legend skill. Unfortunately, he came with coward. I was devastated. Minus 10% attack damage. He has Divine Dragon too. 20% increase in damage attack. So I needed to get more of these Jet Ragans because I didn't want to use the one with the coward trait. I wanted to get much better ones. He only has Gathering Level 3, so it's not really going to be a pal you're going to use in the base. I also decided to fight Necromus, but if you look closely, you'll see there's another legendary pal in the distance, which is Paladius, so you more or less fight two of them at once. These are two legendary pals, of course. After hours of fighting, in-game hours, of course, not real-life hours, <laughs> I finally got Necromus down to a desired level where I could attempt to catch it. A 25% capture rate is viable enough, and after launching a couple of spheres, he finally succumbed, and I managed to nab him. Then it was on to Paladius. Paladius, in my opinion, is much easier to fight than Necromus, and I was also getting pretty good too at cycling pals and dodging attacks. Eventually, Paladius was caught as well. That was more or less all of the legendary pals caught, except one, and that was going to be the Frostalian Noct, but that one is just a breedable pal, so we breed that one eventually. As we can see, all of these pals come with Legend. Necromus had Lord of the Underworld. It's just an increase in dark damage. More or less the same with Paladius, except it had a different trait that gave it an increase to neutral attack damage. The great thing is that all these traits can be bred to different pals in the game. So I could have a Penglet or a Lift Monk, for example, with the Legend trait. I could have it with the Celestial Emperor trait. You know, that's the beauty of breeding in Pal World. With that, it was time to get Frostalian knocked just to finish off all the pals. So I bred a Frostalian with a Hell Zephyr, and that's going to get me Frostalian knocked. So we're going to put the eggs into the incubator. I did breed three in total, in the hopes to get a Frostalian knocked with some decent abilities. I then decided to make Jet Ragan's missile launcher saddle. Not only could I sit and ride around on Jet Ragan, I could also fire missiles with it as well. It was now time to finally get the last legendary pal, which is Frostalian Noct, and this one can only be gotten from breeding. You just have to breed Frostalian and Hell Zephyr, and you get Frostalian Noct, no problem at all. Out of the tree that I bred, two came with the legend's perk, but the third unfortunately didn't. Not to worry though, it was another pal added to our pal deck. We were one step closer to 100%ing this game. In terms of regular skills, Frostalian Noct works more or less the same way as Frostalian. It just utilizes dark attacks instead of the uh, the ice attacks. Look how fast Jet Ragan is here and doesn't even have any skills that increases movement speed. There are three movement speed skills in this game that you can get to dramatically increase your movement of pals. You have Runner, Swift and Nimble. The missiles are just absolutely amazing and you could just wipe out scores of low level pals with them. It was now time to finally make the ultimate penguin. I had enough penguins caught to four-star our penguinet here. As we can see, he had Musclehead, Ferocious, and Hooligan. So he had really good offensive stats. We're also going to get Penguinet's Rocket Launcher. So instead of using a rocket, we will load Penguinet into the launcher instead and fire him at enemies. And it actually does really nice damage. Now, these are Alpha version Suzuku's level 45. And I know it looked like he didn't do much, but he shaved off thousands of damage there with that attack. Quite the devastating ability, indeed. It was time to hatch more huge dragon eggs. What we're making right now are Arzorks. I wanted to breed the ultimate Arzork. He is one of the strongest lightning type pals in the game. In order to fight the last boss, uh, we needed the best dragon type pals the game had to offer. Arzork is a high level dragon, worthy of a position on our battle team. I also decided to max out my Lift Monk, even though it wasn't the Dragon type, it was one of the strongest pals I had in my position. Upon getting 4 stars on Lift Monk, I also figured out that all of its regular skills got upgraded, so it now had level 2 in a lot of work activities, which was nice. Finally got an Arzork here with Hooligan, Musclehead and Ferocious, I was quite happy with that. So we're going to max out that Arzork and we're also going to increase some of its base stats. Just to see how powerful we can make it. Now of course I could have tried to get legend on this and I could have got other skills too. But I didn't want to pour hundreds of more hours into the game. It was finally time to take on the last tower boss and 100% this game. The last tower boss is much much harder than any of the previous tower bosses we've fought so far. Even Marcus and Baralus, 
they pale in comparison to this guy. He's got 200,000 HP, Victor and Shadowbeak. The Shadowbeak also has devastating abilities. So we're gonna open up with Jet Dragon. We're gonna fire all of our special abilities at it, including our missiles, and they do some pretty decent damage. We have 10 minutes to get Victor's HP down to zero. This is by far, in my opinion, the hardest fight in the game. The amount of DPS you need to clear this fight is insane. And I cycled my pals pretty well, but I suppose I could have done a slightly better job. There was 1 minute 40 seconds left on the fight. He had over half HP, so I just quit out. I decided to tame more Jet Dragons. The more Jet Dragons I had, the better chance I had beaten this boss. So that was the second Jet Dragon added to the team, and that one was slightly better than the first. It did have Hooligan, so it was going to do a lot more damage than the first. So I now had two Jet Dragons, two Frost Aliens, and a Yarmanhide Ignis dishing out damage. I got him down to 0 HP, but it was too late. The timer killed my character before I could claim the kill. So that was the second attempt ended in a failure, but by god it was so close. Not to worry, it was time to grind it out even more. This time, we were going to mate the jet dragons that I caught, and we were going to get more jet dragons. We were going to assemble a team of five jet dragons in total, and missile launcher this boss to hell. That was the tactic that we were going to use, and by god did it work so well. I jumped onto each of the jet dragons, and I launched missile after missile, tearing this shadow beak to pieces. Once the missiles were extended, I would use the beam cannon attack, and then I would just switch to the next jet dragon until this boss was dead. I had finally achieved a kill on all tower bosses. What a rush it was. I was so happy by getting 100% on this game. What a game. Probably one of the best games I've played in a long time. If Nintendo are watching this video, could you please put some effort into your Pokemon games and just make them better? I tried to fly over to the big tree here now, thinking that something would change once all the towers went down, but it was a no-go. That tree is blocked. I'm sure the developers of this game will release that tree in a future patch. This is also the inside of the house that I made. As we can see, there's a lot of furniture items you can buy from the technology tree that you can put down in your house. A lot of them are really cool. So as we can see, I've got a really cool toilet here. I also have a bathtub. I've got a sink. If we go downstairs, I've got a really cool bar I'm going to show you now. I've got a nice living room up here with really comfy chairs. I've got kegs downstairs. And the great thing is that all these kegs and all these chests, you can actually put items in them. So that is our 100% Palworld video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again.